Hey there, folks. Sandy at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We got mail. Santee, were cap and ball revolvers used after cartridge firing guns came out? Benji. Benji! Look, Mary! Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Although percussion firearms were present on the frontier prior to the Civil War, this week we're concentrating on later in the period when cartridge pistols became all the rage. Sidearm weaponry during the Civil War was vast. At least 28 different types were carried on both sides of the conflict. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we're gonna go through it together. Largely these were percussion pistols, meaning that powder, ball, and a percussion cap were necessary to make it a firing weapon. In 1854, Frenchman Eugene Le Fachot introduced the first revolver to use self-contained metallic cartridges. They were rimfire and other companies like Smith & Wesson jumped on the cartridge bandwagon during the war between the states. Although this technology would continue to progress and make the percussion firearm obsolete, let's look at how that played out for our Old Westians. So, you've got a war-ravaged country by 1865, and the folks moving out to the West were made up of ex-soldiers as well as immigrants. To get there safely, they had to stock up on provisions. But, because of the coronavirus, nobody could get what they needed, so the West was never settled. The end. Part about the coronavirus, I think the West, yeah, that's good. Let's keep that in. Oh, and on page six, really great part. You guys have to quit this. Too soon? It was well known that this land of opportunity was low on law and high on a lot of things that could endanger you or your family. You should have a gun, preferably more than one. Some soldiers were allowed to purchase their guns at the end of the war, so they had a reliable shooter for the trek. War surplus was available and was cost effective. Companies like Scheuler, Scheuler, uh, Hartley and Graham in New York City were selling obsolete military weapons on the civilian market. That meant cap and ball revolvers would be used by many a Westerner and the ammunition was available. In the 1870s, when the cartridge guns became the norm, some folks actually didn't buy them to replace their old ones. This could be because of cost, availability of ammunition, or that there simply wasn't a need to upgrade. A percussion revolver takes a lot longer to load, could be unsafe, and caps could get caught up in the action locking it up. Regardless, many knew these guns well and relied on their performance. Men like James Butler Hickok and John Wesley Hardin used cap and ball revolvers in some pivotal moments in their lives. In fact, the six guns Hickok carried the majority of his adult life were 36 caliber Colt navies. Now the 36 caliber was popular, with enough stopping power to put an end to a gunfight. Tests on the Colt navy by both the British and American governments revealed it was deadly at 100 yards and effective at more than 200 yards. Colt wasn't the only one. Remington had a revolver that was commonly used on the plains. The hefty Lamatt holding nine bullets and one shotgun load actually did find its way out west. The Star revolver was supposedly a gun in Jesse James' arsenal. There were cartridge conversion options, and many folks jumped on that. Why not save a little money and have the gun you feel comfortable handling turned into a cartridge firer? Also, small concealable belly guns were in vogue, and a number of them wore cap and ball. Seeing percussion pistols at reenacting or gunfight events is a breath of fresh air. I always like to see it as a sidearm, a cowboy, or a miner might have tucked away for trouble. Is we'll use this foam that you mostly see with artificial flowers at cemeteries and stuff. At some point, we'll get our hands on one and do a video on loading them for blank shooting, so those of you interested can learn how to do that. Well, folks, that's it for episode on... Hey, hey, nobody can understand what you're... What are you doing here? I'm taking precautions, Dan, just like every American. We have to we have to be safe. Oh, okay. We'll be safe then. Alright. Go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see y'all down the trail. Take that off. We have to take precautions. We can't, you can't take any chances nowadays, you know? You're right, I got a little something for you in my wallet here. <laughs>